If you want to host your application in the cloud, then it's really useful to know some of the basic elements of how cloud systems actually work. Now, there are many cloud providers out there, but three of the most common ones are AWS, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and the Google Cloud Platform. And these offer all sorts of services and extras that you can use. Before you can actually host anything in the cloud, you need to design your software. If you want to learn how to do that from scratch, check out my free design guide. It's a short PDF, really to the point, contains a ton of tips that hopefully help you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. To get access for free, go to iron.gold slash design guide. The link is also in the description of this video. Before I start talking about these different cloud platforms, first a disclaimer. This is not a in-depth complete video because that's not possible in a five minute Tuesday video. It's really aimed to sort of give you a first introduction to the cloud and how that all works. I'm going to focus on two, three areas. One is compute, another is object storage, and a third one is databases because these are the three things that you will probably encounter the first time you're going to use a cloud platform. I'm going to start with compute. So there you basically have three types. One is virtual machines. Second one is hosted containers. And a third one is serverless. The three different cloud providers that I mentioned at the start of this video all have different names for these things. For example, AWS has EC2, which is their virtual machine. Uh, Azure has virtual machines, which is a very logical name. And Google Cloud has Compute Engine, which is also a virtual machines. Now, typically, virtual machines wouldn't be your go-to technology to use nowadays. I think most people should actually start on the other end of the spectrum with serverless solutions by just writing some code and telling your cloud provider that it should run that code whenever you call an endpoint. And also there, the cloud providers have different names for that. For example, Google has Cloud Functions, Azure has Azure Functions, and Amazon has Lambda functions. And this is actually a pretty great way to start. Most cloud providers offer a free tier where you can have like a bunch of function calls without having to pay actually for the cloud cost. And this is a great way to quickly deploy some code and being able to run it in the cloud. But of course, with this type of serverless computing, you have a lot less control. You often can only pick from a limited number of Python versions. Uh, you have limits in terms of the kinds of machines that you can use, scalability, how everything communicates. So if you need more control, that's when you would move to the other solutions, going from a simple hosted container where you have more control over the execution environment to a complete cluster where you can define the different services that your application needs. Now, the full-fledged way of running containers in all sorts of different configurations is by using Kubernetes, which is in itself a whole category of systems and products that you can use. AWS has EKS, which is their Kubernetes service. Azure has AKS and Google Cloud has Kubernetes engine. Now, next to running a full cluster of containers in a very complicated configuration using Kubernetes, you can also just run a simple container and host it somewhere in the cloud. And the different cloud providers also have a product that does just that and allows for some scalability. On Google Cloud, this is called Cloud Run. Azure has container instances and AWS has Fargate. And these are basically the same thing. The second type of thing that you're going to need is storage, in particular object storage. So you're going to need to store all sorts of assets. And um, the most common way of doing that is what's in cloud platforms called object storage where you store data as objects. And then you can also do things like attach labels to them, perform simple filters and query. And this is typically used for long-term data. AWS has S3 for that. Google has cloud storage and Azure has blob storage. And again, these are basically exactly the same thing. Now, these types of storage are great for storing files like PDFs or Word documents, but they're not really great for querying. And that's why we have a different type of storage, which is a database. Databases have more structured data, which allows for querying and more complex transactions. And they're also more optimized for accessing the data frequently. And just like object storage, we also have database hosting in the cloud. And there's basically three types of database that you're going to see. The first is relational databases, which is one of the most common ones. And that means that you store data in a SQL database using rows and columns. AWS 
Azure, Google Cloud, they all offer different versions of SQL databases, whether you want a MySQL database or a PostgreSQL database. A second type of database that you might want is a NoSQL database. They are very scalable, much more scalable than standard SQL database, but they can also be very costly if you're not careful. AWS has something called DynamoDB, Azure has Cosmos DB, and Google has Firestore or Data Store. A third type of database that you might see is a data warehouse, which really focuses on data on a large scale. For example, AWS has Redshift, Google has BigQuery, and Azure also has a similar type of offering. And then next to that, you might have more specialized things such as knowledge graphs, vector databases, those kinds of things. Finally, with the rising popularity of AI, all these cloud providers also offer all sorts of AI and machine learning solutions, including vision focused products, uh, generative AI, etc. When you pick one of these cloud providers, any of them will basically do whatever you need them to do. You just need to be a bit careful when looking at the kinds of services you need and what the associated costs are, because the pricing is not always the same. And what I've covered today is just a very limited look at cloud capabilities. There's tons of more services related to networking, scheduling, etc. that I didn't cover in this video. But if you'd like me to cover these in more depth, let me know in the comments below. How are you using these cloud platforms? Which is your preferred cloud platform provider? Are you on AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, something else? Let me know in the comments. If you have a Python project that you want to deploy to the cloud, let's say an API, for example, and you want to learn how to do that, check out this video next where I dive into the details. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.